In this video, we'll go over some of the hardest to summon monsters in the game, where they either require a lot of materials to bring them out, have convoluted summoning requirements, or a combination of those two. And today's video is brought to you by Squarespace, which allows making your own website a breeze. And at number 10, we have the easiest to summon monster on this list, and that's Shooting Quasar Dragon. Now, for a normal synchro monster, in order to bring them out, all you need is one tuner monster and one or more non-tuner monsters, where their levels add up to the level of the synchro monster. Pretty simple and basic stuff. What shooting Quasar Dragon requires are synchro monsters in place of all of those requirements. So, you need a tuner synchro monster, plus two or more non-tuner synchro monsters as its materials. So right out of the gate, this card cannot come out unless you brought out at least three other synchro monsters who themselves most likely required at least two materials themselves each. So at minimum, assuming you didn't cheat out the synchro monsters, you're looking at six monsters required to bring this card out. Which isn't half bad, especially in combo decks whose sole focus is bringing this card out. And this card is definitely a win condition, as if you're able to bring it out, it has 4,000 attack, can attack twice per turn baseline, with the option to attack more times depending on the amount of materials used for its summon, and it has a once per turn Omni Negate, which is one of the best effects in the game. And if this card leaves the field, you get to special summon another good synchro monster from your extra deck, Shooting Star Dragon, who himself is kind of difficult to bring out. Now, there are other synchro monsters who have the same materials as Shooting Quasar Dragon, and a few other synchro monsters who have almost equally convoluted summoning requirements, but Shooting Quasar Dragon is the best of the bunch, and is just as hard to bring out as all of them, which is why I'm using him to represent the hard to bring out synchro monsters on this list, and only at the number 10 spot. And at number 9, we have the Gate Guardian. This is a level 11 vanilla monster, basically, whose only effect is detailing the conditions for its summon, where you need to tribute three specific level 7 monsters on your side of the field in order to special summon this card from your hand. Now, what makes this card harder to bring out than something like shooting Quasar Dragon is that you need to have three level 7 monsters on your side of the field who are not easily searched out from the deck. Plus, you need to have Gate Guardian in your hand as well, which is a much harder hurdle to overcome than having an extra deck monster who's always available to be summoned as long as you have the requirements on your side of the field set. Gate Guardian needs the requirements on the field and you need the card in your hand, which thankfully it does have cards that search it out. You can get Gate Guardian from your deck with Arsenal Summoner or Isolde, Two Tales of Noble Knights. But the three materials are all of three different types and attributes because Kaze Jin is a spellcaster wind monster, Sui Jin is an aqua water monster, and Saga of Thunder is a light thunder type monster, which don't count as belonging to an archetype like the Gate Guardian does, and there's no consistent way to search out all those three cards from the deck. At least with Halakti the Creator God, who also requires three specific monsters on the field for its summon, the three God cards are all at least of the same type and attribute and belong to the same archetype. So there's some consistency to actually searching those cards out, even if they are also hard to summon. And with the three Gate Guardian pieces, they're all level 7 monsters with no inherent summoning conditions, but they at least do not have restrictions on their summoning. So if you have the ability to Pendulum Summon level 7 monsters, you can easily get all three of them out in a Pendulum deck. But that still doesn't solve the problem of searching them out first, and that's kind of the difficulty in summoning Gate Guardian. It's too hard to search out all of its pieces while also running a deck that's able to bring them all out easily. And the Gate Guardian himself isn't good at all, so it's not really worth the effort to try to do that. And at number 8, we have the Spirit of the Pharaoh. This is a level 6 monster who can only be special summoned by the effect of the First Sarcophagus, and cannot be special summoned in other ways. And what the First Sarcophagus is, is a card very similar to Destiny Board, where you have to activate a trap card which will then set other continuous spell cards from your deck to the field during your opponent's end phases. And then after it sets the second and third sarcophaguses with its effect, you can then special summon the Spirit of the Pharaoh. And what makes this particularly difficult is the fact that if any of the sarcophagus cards are destroyed, the other ones are also destroyed and the combo is ruined. So in order to bring out the Spirit of the Pharaoh, you basically have to just wait two turns and protect your back row from spell or trap card destruction. And in a game with Nightmare Phoenix being the most used extra deck monster in the game, and with cards like Twin Twisters and Lightning Storm being some of the most played main and side deck cards in the game, it's pretty hard to protect your back row for too long with something that's not a Floodgate. In fact, using a Floodgate like Mystic Mine is probably one of the only consistent ways to let this card go off, 
even though it ironically enough negates the effects of Spirit of the Pharaoh as well when it hits the field. As what Spirit of the Pharaoh does, if it's able to hit the field, is it has an incredibly underwhelming effect where it can special summon up to four level two or lower normal zombie type monsters from your graveyard. Now, for how difficult this card is to summon, you also have to set up your graveyard with terrible cards if you want to make full use of its effect, which can allow you to go and do some decent link plays if you're able to get all four of the monsters with it at least. Or with the same kind of setup, you can just use Tri White for a similar amount of card advantage with half the amount of cards needed and no back row protection required. And at number seven, we have Venomi Naga, the deity of poisonous snakes. This card can only be summoned with the effect of Rise of the Snake Deity, which is a trap card that can only be activated if the level 8 monster Venominon, the King of Poisonous Snakes, is destroyed on your side of the field with a card effect. And Venominon, the King of Poisonous Snakes, is a level 8 monster which needs to be cheated onto the field in some way, which thankfully is not that hard since it has zero attack and defense. So it can be cheated out of the deck very easily with damage equals reptile. So if any of your reptile type monsters battles and you take damage, you'll be able to summon Venominon from your deck. Alternatively, if you manage to get into the graveyard, you can use Limit Reverse to special summon it, and then simply change it to defense position on your turn in order to have it be destroyed by the effect of Limit Reverse. Which will then allow you to use the effect of Rise of the Snake Deity to bring out Venominaga. Now, all of this seems pretty simple, except it's kind of a nightmare to get all those cards out in the field at the same time in a consistent deck especially since reptile type monsters have so little support. Although they do excel at getting monsters in the graveyard thanks to Snake Rain, and searching out Rise of the Snake Deity has been made a lot easier thanks to cards like Trap Trick and Lilith, giving you the ability to search it out pretty easily from the deck. But even with being able to search out the trap card easier, it's still kind of hard to get a level 8 monster in the field which you then have to destroy by a card effect. And then, if you're able to accomplish all of this, the Nominaga does have some of the best protection in the game, where it cannot be affected by card effects nor targeted by any card effects, so it's basically immune to whatever your opponent might try to do to it. And also, if it's destroyed by battle, it can special summon itself from the graveyard by banishing a reptile type monster. It also gains 500 attack for each reptile in your graveyard, which is where Snake Rain comes in handy again, and if it inflicts battle damage to your opponent three times, you instantly win the duel. So they kind of made it worth to try to bring this card out, but it's so convoluted to bring out, especially requiring a trap card which is pretty slow for combos, that it's squarely a bad gimmick deck. Alternatively, you can bring this out with a wild monster appears, but it gets returned to the deck at the end of your opponent's turn, and even though Venomi Naga is immune to card effects, it's not immune to lingering effects, so it would still get returned due to the effect of a wild monster appears, just in case any of y'all were wondering. And at number 6, we have Thenan, the Great Sphinx. This card can only be special summoned by paying 500 life points when two specific level 10 monsters are destroyed at the exact same time on your side of the field. But it at the very least can special summon itself from the hand or deck without the requirement of another trap card like Rise of the Snake Deity. However, requiring two hard to bring out monsters to be destroyed at the exact same time is a little bit harder of a requirement than getting out one specific monster who needs to be destroyed with the specific trap card on the field, even if there is an archetype specific way to accomplish this. You see, the two cards, Androsphinx and Sphinx Talia, can special summon themselves from your hand if you control the Pyramid of Light on your side of the field. And the Pyramid of Light has the effect where if it's removed from the field, it will destroy those two monsters and then remove them from play. So the combo for bringing out Thena and the Great Sphinx is to use Pyramid of Light to special summon the level 10 Sphinxes from your hand, somehow destroy your own Pyramid of Light with a card like Mystical Space Typhoon, which will then destroy the two Sphinxes on the field at the exact same time, which will then allow you to activate the effect of Thena and the Great Sphinx. Seems easy enough, except for the fact that there's no way to search out any of these cards. I mean, obviously there's ways to search out any card in the game. Technically, cards like Sales Pitch can search out anything, and so can Symbol of Friendship. But that's not what I'm talking about. What I talk about when a card has no searchers, I mean it has no archetype specific things that make getting them out easy. Pyramid of Light doesn't have any searchers as well, so it's not actually very efficient to run that combo if you're trying to get out the Great Sphinx, which is kind of the drawback for the archetype. It's more efficient to just bring out the two cards like normal, then destroy them both with something like Dark Hole, than it is to use Pyramid of Light, which can special summon them much easier. 
I don't think the Great Sphinx was supposed to be this hard to summon. It just barely doesn't have enough support where it ends up on the difficult side of bringing out. Especially since the main card required for its summons are a little bit too high level. They're both level 10, which makes them very hard to use in a Pendulum Summon deck, like you could with the Gate Guardian pieces. Which is why Thenin takes a slightly higher spot than Venominaga and Gate Guardian, since it kind of has requirements similar to both of those cards. And at number 5, we have Exodia Necros. This card can only be special summoned with the spell card called Contract with Exodia, which requires you to have all 5 pieces of Exodia in your graveyard and Exodia Necros in your hand, which then allows you to special summon said card. Now, if Contract with Exodia allowed you to special summon Exodia Necros from your deck, it probably would not have made this list. The fact that it also requires that card to be in your hand is just kind of icing on the cake when it comes to making this card incredibly hard to bring out. Now, having five specific cards in the graveyard is a tough requirement to fulfill. However, there are a couple of ways to kind of cheese this mechanic. There's the obvious one with Painful Choice, a banned card that lets you search out five cards from your deck, and then we'll send four of them to the graveyard and add one of them to your hand. There's also Advanced Ritual Art, which allows you to send normal monsters from your deck to the graveyard to fulfill the requirements for a Ritual Summon. And four of the five pieces of Exodia are level one normal monsters. So it's really easy to send all of them to the graveyard with a single Ritual Art, which itself is a good card. Although even with that combo used, you still need to get the head of Exodia in the graveyard, which would require to use something like Foolish Burial or Armageddon Knight. And then there's also Exodius the Ultimate Forbidden Lord, who can send pieces of Exodia from your deck to the graveyard when it declares an attack, and is a level 10 spellcaster type monster. Which means if you activate Diffusion Wave Motion on the card, it gains the ability to attack all of your opponent's monsters once each. So if your opponent has 5 cards to attack, it can send all 5 pieces to the grave, and actually just win you the duel on its own. Although that's kind of a gimmick as well, and not a consistent way to get the cards in the graveyard. Honestly, the best way to do it is through the Advanced Ritual Art method. And then all you have to do is just search out Exodia Necros and its specific spell card, Contract with Exodia, which just adds to the difficulty of bringing this card out, as they don't really have good ways to search out either of them. Searching out normal spell cards is probably the hardest type of card to search out, which definitely adds to the difficulty of bringing out Exodia Necros. And what do you get for all of this effort? An 1800 attack, level 4 monster, who can't be destroyed by battle or spell or trap card effects, whose only positive effect is that it gains 500 attack during each of your standby phases, and has a negative effect where it destroys itself if any of your pieces of Exodia are removed from the graveyard. Now, its protection is not even that good, since it can be destroyed by monster effects, which is how most people destroy things, and its attack boost is laughably slow, so it's not really worth bringing out unlike a lot of the other cards I've talked about so far, where at least Quasar and Venomi Naga have good effects. And today's video is sponsored by Squarespace, a website that lets you build websites for whatever you might need a website for. Personally, what I did was build a website that had all of my custom cards I've ever made to see how easy the process was for myself. And as someone with no experience making websites, it was pretty easy. So if you're in the need of making a professional looking site, you can sign up under my link at squarespace.com slash the duologues to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. And if you make a website dedicated to your custom cards as well, you should totally send them to my Twitter so I can check them out. That's squarespace.com slash the duologues to create your own website today. And now, on to the number four spot. And at number four, we have Sophia, Goddess of Rebirth. This card can only be special summoned from your hand by banishing four monsters from either side of the field. And the four monsters it needs are one Ritual, one Fusion, one Synchro, and one Xyz monster. And when this card is summoned, you get to banish all of the cards in both players' hands, fields, and graveyards on a spell speed 4 effect, which is pretty good. Although it's very hard to get those four kinds of cards in the field at the same time in a consistent way. You see, of the four types, three of them require main deck cards in order to bring them out. Synchro monsters require you to play tuner monsters, fusion monsters require you to play specific spell cards or monsters that allow you to perform fusion summons, and ritual monsters require ritual spell cards to bring them out. Xyz monsters are probably the easiest of the bunch, as all you need are two monsters of the same level. So with all of the requirements of this card, you'd have to play a whole bunch of stuff that don't really combo well with each other, as generally, if you're playing a ritual deck, the entire deck revolves around getting those ritual monsters out easier. Same with fusion monsters, not as much so as tuners, as a lot of those are very easy to splash into other decks and could be considered not a big deal. 
So if you want to build a deck that's able to get out the two harder of the four materials easier, the Ritual Infusion Monster, what you can do is simply play Cyber's Witch in your extra deck. This is a Link Monster which requires two Cyber's Monsters as material, and thankfully 30% of Link Monsters in the game are Cyber's type, so you can bring it out with two Cyber's Link Monsters if you don't want to play Cyber's Monsters in your main deck. And when Cyber's Witch is brought out, you get to add two cards to your hand, a Cyber's Ritual Monster and Cynet Ritual. If you simply add Paladin of the Storm Dragon, you can easily have your Ritual Monster fulfilled without having to play a whole bunch of Ritual Search cards as Paladin of Storm Dragon is a level 4 ritual monster, so it should be very easy to have the required tributes for its ritual summon with Cynet Ritual. Then for the fusion monster, if you play Guard Dragon LP, you can use its effect to special summon Curse of Dragonfire from your deck, who will then allow you to fusion summon with LP to go into Borolode Furious Dragon, which will fulfill your conditions for the fusion monster without any other kind of setup, except having to play a level 4 lower dragon monster to bring out LP, having Curse of Dragonfire in your deck, and of course having the correct link arrows pointing at each other. Now I'm just bringing up two examples of ways to get out the two hardest kinds of monsters you need to bring out Sophia, and even those two easiest ones require a whole bunch of inconsistent cards in your deck that might muddy up your combos, which doesn't even count for the XCs and synchro monsters you also need to get out, and of course finding a way to search out Sophia to your hand. There's a lot that goes into bringing this card out, and it easily earns its distinction as one of the hardest monsters to bring out in the game. And at number 3, we have Armed Dragon Catapult Cannon. This is a fusion monster, which means you at least don't need to search out this card in order to summon it like the previous two cards in the list, but its main requirements are so difficult that that doesn't really matter very much. In order to fusion summon this card, you need to banish its two fusion materials, which are VWXYZ Dragon Catapult Cannon and Armed Dragon Level 7. VWXYZ Dragon Catapult Cannon itself is a hard to bring out fusion monster, which requires you to banish two fusion monsters on your side of the field, XYZ Dragon Cannon and VW Tiger Catapult, who themselves are kind of difficult fusion monsters to bring out, who require their main deck monsters to be on the field in order to banish themselves in order to bring out these cards, as it doesn't let you use fusion spell cards. Then there's Armed Dragon Level 7, which can only be special summoned by the effect of Armed Dragon Level 5. And Armed Dragon Level 5 has the effect, where after it destroys a monster by battle, you can send it to the graveyard to special summon Armed Dragon Level 7 from your hand or deck. And Armed Dragon Level 5 can be special summoned with the effect of Armed Dragon Level 3, who can send itself to the graveyard during the standby phase to just special summon level 5 from your hand or deck. So, Armed Dragon Catapult Cannon is most likely a joke card because of how difficult it is to bring out the two materials for its summon in the first place but it does have an effect that basically wins you the duel if you're able to bring it out. So it's kind of worth bringing out, like shooting Quasar Dragon or Sophia, where on a quick effect, during your opponent's turn, you can banish one card from your deck or extra deck in order to banish all cards your opponent controls and in their graveyard, and then it has another effect on the field where your opponent cannot activate card effects if they share a name as a card that's banished, which means it could most likely shut down your opponent from playing the game while also getting rid of everything they have. Now, how to bring this card out easier? Well, there is actually a way outside of bringing it out manually with its hard to summon materials. You see, there's this card called Ojama Simulation, which allows you to banish Ojama monsters from your graveyard to coincidentally special summon the materials required for VWXYZ Dragon Catapult Cannon. So if you just simply use two copies of Ojama Simulation and have five Ojamas in your graveyard to activate both of them, you can bring out all the materials for VWXYZ Dragon Catapult Cannon with those two cards, and you can search out two copies of it with a single Ojama Blue, which makes this a lot more possible than it might sound. And in order to get out Arm Dragon Level 7, you can simply bring out Arm Dragon Level 5 with Oja Match, which will allow you to add it to your hand and then immediately normal summon it, assuming you have a tribute for it. Then you can use Level Up in order to bypass its summoning condition to bring out Arm Dragon Level 7 directly from the deck. And pulling both of these things off on the same turn, which would require you to have four specific cards in your hand and a setup graveyard and field, is highly inconsistent. Even using cards that allow you to cheat out the requirements easier is still convoluted and requires a lot of resources, which is why this card definitely deserves a high spot on this list. And at number two, we have Zushin, the Sleeping Giant. This is a card which can only be special summoned from your hand by tributing a monster you control that has 10 Zushin counters on it. And the way you get Zushin counters 
is with this card, which has a hand effect where you can reveal this card in your hand to target a level 1 normal monster you control, which will then allow you to place one Zushin counter on it. So if you're able to protect a level 1 normal monster for 10 turns while you activate this effect 10 times, you'll be able to bring it out. And its effects on the field are, it's unaffected by other card effects, and if it battles a monster, it will always have 1,000 more attack than that monster. Which, hey, isn't half bad. You can basically win duels with a single Ultimate Falcon, and this card is able to bypass the weakness of Ultimate Falcon where that card can be destroyed by battle. Although that requirement is obviously too difficult to accomplish on its own. So, how do you bring it out easier? Well, it's all in the wording of this card. You see, its hand effect is a soft once per turn, which means you can use other copies of it in order to add more counters to one card quickly. So if you have three copies of Zushin the Sleeping Giant in your hand, that's three counters on a card per turn, which would mean only having to protect the card for four turns instead of ten. And this can be sped up even further if you're able to return the cards from your hand to your deck with something like Reload or Magical Mallet, as the condition for its soft once per turn is to reveal the card for the rest of the turn in your hand. So if you simply return it to your deck and then draw the card again, that condition will be reset for the turn and will allow you to use its hand effect an additional time. And to make it even easier, if you simply draw through your entire deck where you have no cards left, you'll be able to draw the Zushin Giants every time you use Reload or Magical Mallet, which could allow you to fulfill the conditions for its effect in one turn if you return all three copies a handful of times. And then if you simply have a copy of Mask of Remnants or Jackpot 7, you can just return that card back to your deck every turn so that you don't deck out, and then have a nearly unkillable Zushin the Sleeping Giant on the field. Now, the obvious problem to this strategy is that it's incredibly hard to draw through your entire deck while having specific cards in your hand at the end of that, as the only consistent way to draw through your entire deck is with the Danger Engine, which does not allow you to keep specific cards in your hand at all, unless you're super lucky. And to bring it out with a single copy of itself, having to protect an incredibly weak monster for 10 turns is obviously super difficult, and that's why it's one of the hardest monsters to bring out. But I do have one more spot on this list to talk about, which is difficult for a different reason. And at number one, we have Dark Sage. This card can simply be brought out from the deck by tributing a Dark Magician you control immediately after the effect of Time Wizard was activated in which you called the coin toss correctly. Then you can add one spell card from your deck to your hand. So the card at least can special summon itself from the deck, which makes it a lot better than a whole bunch of the other cards in this list that require them to be in your hand. However, its effect is tied to having two specific monsters on the field and then calling a coin toss correctly. So, even if you do everything right and pull off the conditions for this card summoning in the most efficient way possible, it's still possible to fail summoning this card by just simply being unlucky. As getting Dark Magician on the field is honestly not super difficult, it's a level 7 vanilla monster, but it also has some of the most amount of support to any other card in the game, and can be brought up very easily with a single Magician's Souls. Time Wizard is not that difficult to bring out either thanks to Fusion Deployment, which will let you special summon it directly from the deck. And then all you have to do is activate Time Wizard's effect, which requires you to call heads or tails. And if you call it correctly, you can destroy all monsters on your opponent's side of the field. But if you call it wrong, you destroy all of your monsters instead, and then take damage equal to half of their attack of all the monsters. So it has a pretty harsh penalty for calling it incorrectly. You can use second coin toss in order to try to increase the odds of activating this card correctly, since it will let you redo the coin toss once. But having that card on the field adds another piece to the combo, which requires you to search it out, and that card is actually kind of difficult to search out. But even then, there's still a 50-50 chance of the card actually working, which I think goes up a little bit if you have second coin toss out as well, but I'm not 100% sure how the averages work out with getting a reflip. But honestly, getting those three cards on the field is a lot easier than pretty much all the other cards in this list, but having to rely on luck in addition to that makes it very hard to actually bring out consistently, and if you're just unlucky, it's never going to come out, which is why it's the number one spot on this list. But it's really hard to quantify the luck of a coin toss when it comes to summoning a monster, so really the top four spots could be considered harder than Dark Sage, but I'm pretty unlucky with coin tosses, especially since I always seem to get tails more often than not. If I ever have the choice to choose heads or tails, I always pick tails, for example. So I feel like this card needs to be at the number one, as you can still fail at bringing it out even if you do pull off all of its summoning conditions. Alright, and that's the list. 
If you feel there's any other monsters that are way more difficult to bring out that I may have missed, I'd love to hear about them down in the comments, as well as ideas for future videos just like this one. And also, fun fact, did you know the amount of people who watch these videos that are subscribed to the channel has increased to over 40%? It's currently at 41%, but the amount of people who's turned on notification bell is only at 12.8%.